everything should be really cold. There's ice underneath this hotel pan that I'm going to grind the meat into. The head of the grinder has been in the freezer and is nice and cold. And my meat is cold and in the fridge. I'm going to pull it out and start grinding. So I have a bunch of brisket ends and some pork ends in here. And I'm going to make a Italian-esque, I guess for lack of a better term, type sausage. I'm going to grind this up. I'm going to add a bunch of spices and stuff to it. Then I'm going to grind it again with a finer dye. And then I'm going to stuff it. So I like to cut my strips of meat long so that they're easier to feed in to the machine. There's a lot of fat in the beginning here, but I'm going to mix it all up. I would often do this with mostly pork, but I have a bunch of brisket ends, so I'm going to use those up. That's a great thing about doing sausages is that if you trim and meat up, you end up with something to use the scraps. So I've done my first pass of grinding. I'm going to swap out my die for a finer die. I always like to check and make sure that there's no excess sinew stuck around here and there's almost always something jammed up in here. You want to make sure it's unplugged when you do this. So you don't cut your finger off. because That wouldn't be any fun. Okay. Finer die is on. The next stage is to add in the spices and then grind those through on the second pass. So I have a few different things here that I want to add in. I've got some red wine vinegar. So I have some garlic here. This is garlic that I have slowly cooked or confit in, gar in olive oil. I've got some onion here, about a cup. Of just finely diced onion got quite a bit of salt put that around I have some cayenne pepper some paprika some red chili flake and I have some fennel seed going in with some thyme oh I got the pepper here too got to throw that in I got some oregano, some basil, and the recipe that I originally started with called for sugar, but I'm going to put maple syrup in there, eh? So it's not a, it's Italian-esque, but hey, there's a lot of Italian Canadians, so maple syrup seems like a great idea. I'm just going to take my, my mick, my meat, and all of the spices and I'm going to just kind of loosely incorporate them together. I'm not worried too much about super even mix at this point because like I said I'm going to run it all through a fine dye and that'll really blend it together. Now I have to get this into here. So I'm just going to push it all through. Meat is all ground. I'm really digging this. I like the color. There's quite a bit of fat in here, maybe a bit more than a normal ratio. It's hard to tell because I did have a lot of brisket fat and the pork that I had was really light colored. So this is coming off as kind of pretty pink. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knead this. I'll we'll take it off the ice. And you're going to need it to incorporate it all together. And I also want to build up some of those proteins and make it sticky. So the goal is to be able to hold it, have it stick to your hand. All right, so it's pretty sticky. Uh, it's got these like the stringiness sort of starts to change its appearance. This is ready to be stuffed into the casing. So it's gonna go back in the fridge and rest for a while. It can rest this overnight or maybe for an hour or so while you clean up your site and get it ready for doing the casings, doing the stuffing. Uh, but you wanna make sure you put that in the fridge. And a lot of times it's good to let it sit. The spices and everything will co-mingle uh, this is also a good time to take your 
a little bit and do a quenelle test where you just drop that in boiling water or fry it in a pan or just run it in the microwave for a second to taste and see what the seasoning is like. I think I have everything I need here. I have my sausage meat. I have my stuffer with funnel on it. I have Mr. Pokey. I have some twine, some scissors, and some casings that I've been soaking in warm water to soften them up. These are beef casings. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to load my stuffer with sausage and I'm going to want to push it in there in such a way that there's not a lot of air bubbles or anything like that. It's probably going to take about three loads of this thing to do all this meat. This has been in the freezer, so the stuffer is really cold. And then I'm going to grab one of my casings. These come on these plastic casing holders that you should be able to like put on here and pull and the whole thing should come out really easy, but I've never really had much luck with it. Just going to lubricate this a little bit with some water and then just pull this on. Find the gloves are great for putting the meat in, but then they sort of get in the way. This is a pretty wet job. So I always have cloth around to wipe up after myself. I actually like that it gets sort of a little bit wet here because everything just slides around really nicely. It's easy to move the sausage. So I usually just tie a nice knot on the end and then pull this back on and just poke a little hole with Mr. Pokey here. And then it's just a matter of, I find that the glove makes it hard to feel the tension of the sausage uh, and you really kind of want to have a good idea of how much meat is going in there so that you don't overfill it and have your casing break. So off to a good start here and it's just a matter of getting used to how much you want to put in there. I like to start a little spiral going. Okay, so I've pushed out the contents of my stuffer and I'm just going to grab a bit of my twine here and tie this off. So the next thing I like to do is pull this out into one long double sausage like this and then I'm just going to sort of run down the sausage to sort of make sure that if there's any spots that are too full or not full enough they sort of get evened out a bit and then I'm going to take Mr. Pokey and I'm just going to go along and poke the whole way down uh, this is just to relieve some of the air pressure that's in there so that when we start to twist, the air has somewhere to go and doesn't pop through the casing. Uh, and then later on, after we twist, we're going to look at uh, popping certain spots where there might be an air buildup. I take this, Mr. Pokey, which I always use when I'm stuffing my sausages, so it's always around, and I just use this as a measure. And I just go down the sausage... And I'll start here because it's easier to see. I just go down the sausage, and that will be the length of each of my sausages. And now I've got my sausages sort of measured off. I'll redo these sides here. It's pretty forgiving if you decide to change it. And like, I don't know, you're going to be left maybe at one end with one that's bigger than the other. If you think about it ahead of time, you can even it out better. And then I just take one sausage, twist it forward, and then I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to move over two links and I'm going to move this one the opposite direction. And then this one is going to go forward. And then I'm going to move over a link and I'm going to go backwards. Oh, that one was, that one wanted to break out. And if your sausage is like, it's better to go sort of loose than overstuff your sausages. Um, because you can always twist, 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 twist and make up for like, 
a lack of stuffing, but if you have too much in there, you're going to break the casing. Now I'm going to look for air pockets and I'm going to take my poker and I'm just going to poke those out. I always thought that you didn't want to poke your sausages. I thought that that would ruin it. But I quickly learned that poking sausages is not frowned upon, but is actually a well-loved practice. So there's my first set, my first set of links. And I'm going to do a bunch more. So here we go. Here's our haul. Uh, beautiful looking sausage. Italian-esque, I guess I would call it. Uh, it has some of those sort of spices that you would find in an Italian sausage. But it also has a little bit of maple syrup. And I just played around with it. I had a lot of brisket fat around. This is going to be an interesting sausage to try. It's like... You can see it has a lot of fat in it, but that's not too much. But yeah, it's going to be really exciting. You can just have fun with sausages. So rewarding. Such an exciting thing to learn to make and to make regularly. And you can just play around. You can do whatever you want with sausages. And it's always delicious because it's sausage. I'm going to take these and I'm going to refrigerate them overnight to dry them out a little bit. You can see that there's... A lot of moisture on the casings the casings will shrink a little bit and then i'm going to smoke them so it's the next day and these are dried off quite a bit in the fridge you can see they're no longer shiny and wet uh, so now i'm going to just take these ones and i'm going to smoke them i want to make sure i put a probe in them so i'll pick a sausage kind of in the middle of the smoker and i'll just insert that probe right down the center of it that way I know that I'm not going to cook these too much. What I really want to do is I want to cook them to they're just pasteurized, which is around 60 degrees centigrade or 145 Fahrenheit. 